stuff. Okay. So uh, last week we spoke about how to take a, a matrix, a Hermitian matrix and take the input Hamiltonian. Then we were discussing that uh, basically the structure of the bracket here for the generator of the rotation here, that this gives us diagonalizing properties. Yeah, that this is a very good, well, very good. That's kind of what I'm trying to see whether it's a good ansatz or not, but it's it's a, an ansatz that works nicely. Um, or again, nicely is something we want to check and nicely means it would be particularly efficient. Okay, and um, uh, and uh, what we want to discuss today is how to put those iterations onto a quantum computer. So you will take instead of H zero evolutions under H zero. Uh, evolutions under H0, and then we want to turn this into evolutions under approximately the bracket, which means we will be di diagonalizing, okay? And this diagonalizing stuff we want to implement on the uh, quantum computer. So let me start with that. Uh, let me make a new page and, okay. So I take a Hamiltonian, H0. From this, I construct the first bracket, W0 where I take some diagonal operator that is Hermitian and H0 that is also Hermitian, which means omega uh, dagger or W0 dagger is minus W0, which means that if I construct this H of S, uh, I will have E to S W0 H0, E to minus S W0, okay? And um, and now uh, we want to ask how to implement this. So if I write V0 E to S W0, how do I implement this on a quantum computer? Okay, so actually I think I want to call this, let's call this U0. So this is an idealized thing that we would like to, to have and now, a quantum computer um, uh, will do different things. So a quantum computer could, for example, do for you evolutions under this Hamiltonian. And I will write it like this with T in real. And this I will call Oracle access to evolution under H0, okay? And the next ingredient that we want to use um, is that if I use this together with I T D zero T in R, then I can uh, use those operations to approximate um, evolution under a, a bracket Hamiltonian. So what we will do is uh, we will take A equals A dagger and B equals B dagger. So for us, A will be maybe H0 and B will be D0, okay? But in general, we can take some small s, S, I, E, I, S, B, E to minus I, S, A, E to minus I, S, B. And this we can call V, G, C sub s. So this is called a group commutator. And why is it a group commutator? Uh, we want to think of the group of unitary operators. So u such that u minus one is u dagger. So matrices whose inverse is simply the dagger are unitary matrices. And this is a unitary group on some dimension, uh, on some dimension, uh, N, or I don't know, okay? So not to confuse those two things. This is an operator and this is just a unitary group, okay? And within this group, from this, you will always take something that looks like E to I and, and maybe I would want to put an S, but this S can be absorbed into A, okay? And now in a group, you can compose those unitary operators. So you can do EI times EB, 
is again in this unitary group of dimension n, right? So the question becomes, how can I turn some operations here into commutators? And what turns out is that uh, this group commutator unitary, so I repeat this so that you get used to this. Um, this kind of stuff is used for compiling, so solo Kitaev algorithm. And what do we have here? I was writing it quickly, but I have A, B, and then minus A minus B, okay? So this kind of interlacing is our VGC. And then if I look here, E to minus, uh, I think with a minus, but we can check in a moment, A, B, but this I need to square because there's a cancellation here. And this is uh, smaller than O to S to power three. Okay, so if um, S is much, much smaller than one, then VGCS is approximating E to, I think here is plus, plus S squared AB. And um, and we get our bracket, right? So let's, let's see directly at that. Um, we wanted to have this evolution here under the bracket where W0 is the commutator of D0 and H0. So I said A we will set to H0 and B to D0. So this group commutator is a general prescription, but we want to apply this to our problem. So all that we need to do now is, um, all that we need to do now is to say, okay, if I have E to I square root S, h0 e to i square root s d0 e to minus i square root s h0 and then e to minus i s square root d0 then i have a minus here e to s commutator d0 uh, d0 h and i think here i actually have to have a minus in this way and this is something that for small enough s goes down as a power of s to power three so for for very small uh, durations here we get our bracket implementation okay so let me check the chat if there's any questions or somebody might want to ask a question it's a good moment to ask a question about anything here so this group commutator is actually a technique from group theory from from unitary groups but is very uh, very nicely uh, known in 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 quantum computation because of the solo Kitaev algorithm so i will write this here solo vai Kitaev algorithm for example example okay if you want to know a bit more context about this but if I want to get on a quantum computer a bracket of two operators, I would in a standard way do this interlacing. Let me say a little bit more about this. So if I have E to I, I A, E to I, B, and I'm absorbing the duration into A and B, then E to A, E to minus I, B, I could bracket here like this. And then if I define B, under a to be e to i a b e to minus i a then i can write that this is e to b a e to minus i b and this i can expand so this will be in zero order in a this will be b plus i commutator a and b plus dot 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 so i would have a okay let me write one more a comma a b that would be the second derivative of this regular evolution here okay this is just like standard stuff we do in in perturbation theory dyson series and so on right so the derivatives under a is it's basically commutators so let's let's write this uh, like this e to i b plus uh, a b and then I forget those things, dot, 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 and then e to minus b. So if I would match those things together, I would get an approximation that e to i 
a b is the leading term here and then plus dot 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 and we can forget this so we get the approximation e to i commutator a b which is my way of arguing whether i made a sign mistake above or not yeah this can be always checked in one number yeah. uh, good so this is the intuition why this group commutator works and then i was writing down here already that we can do it for those double bracket iterations so let me uh, let me redefine the double bracket iteration to say that I take h0 from this I compute omega uh, w0 which is some d0 h0 then this I use to compute h of s which is just a rotation s w0 h0 e to minus s w0 and from this I find s opt and I define h1 to be h of s opt and i make a recursive step to say from this a moment of thought i have the freedom of choosing new one it can be the same it can be a new so it could be d0 again but maybe it's good to choose a new one and instead of h0 i wrote here wrongly i will take a new one h1 so then i will get h1 of s and then I repeat it. So when I get H2, it will be actually a rotation to E to S W1 and S1, E to S0 W0, H0, and then E to minus S0 W0 inside and then outside S1 W1. Yeah, you get the idea. So basically, uh, if we iterate this, after n steps, vn, we will get e to s w uh, n, e to s w n minus one, dot 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 e to s w uh, zero. Okay, so this is n plus one steps of the iteration, and that will give me the Hamiltonian after n plus n n plus one steps. So the initial Hamiltonian is rotated by this. Uh, how do I write this here? I put the dagger. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit confused right now because uh, we are having this HS and then we are optimizing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have this S1, which is SOPT. Yeah, so, how... so this I will set, thank you, Akash. This will be S0. Yeah. And then, and then once you have h this, you will get s opt optimal s, and then set it to be s um, s one, but s okay. optimal by by trying to reduce the off diagonal of the h one of s. Hmm. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So just by tuning the zipper and and finding which angle of rotation was the best. So uh, basically, what I describe here is a recursive algorithm. So I can write DBI recursion. And this recursion we can try to implement. Uh, so this is an abstract abstract uh, algorithm. I write quotation marks because I use kind of induction. I didn't formalize it much. But now we want to write a quantum algorithm. So you can think of this as a group commutation iteration because we will be making the iteration step to be H1 is E to S0. Uh, sorry, we will do this. Okay, I need to... Basically, there will be the group commutator uh, uh, instead of the full bracket. So what do we do? Um, which notation is best? I will do VGC, VGC uh, um, of S0 of the operator D0 and then H0 here. And then I rotate H0 with that and then VGC S0 of A, uh, not A, D0. H0, okay, there we go. And then on one of them, I need to put dagger, but like this, we can fix by the sign of D0 as well. So yeah, 
So what's the difference? The difference is that um, that basically, so I will call this J1. So as soon as we start departing from the DBI recursion, we will be going somewhere away. So this is SW0, H0, E2, SW0 with a minus. And then we what we can try to show now is, for example, in the first step, J1 minus H1, if I look at a norm, I will get that this, um, so let's write J1 is V0, H0, V1, okay? Uh, V0 dagger. So I get that I'm rotating by V0, H0, V0 dagger minus E2 SW0, H0, E2 minus SW0. Close this here, yeah? And now what I, I can use is um, I can insert here. I can insert here V0, H0, E2 minus SW0 minus the same thing, minus V0, H0, E2 minus S0, W0. Sorry about the writing. And then I use triangular inequality. So I have V, W0, H0, V0 dagger uh, minus V0, H0, E to minus SW0 plus, plus uh, this other term. So V0, H, E to minus S. W zero. There's a, this is standard stuff, yeah. Okay, I'm just doing the calculation here. Okay, and now I I will kind of speed it up a little bit. So I bracket here, and I can bracket here. Okay, just to speed it up, and then I will use uh, multiplicativity or sub multiplicativity properties of the norm that you choose. So this should be smaller or equal a, a b, and let's choose the operator norm. So what we see is that we will get uh, by unitary invariance, I will get uh, norm h0. Uh, well, you could put v0, but we will say this is one. Uh, norm of h0 times uh, this v0 minus e2 minus sw0 plus the other term. So long story short, J1 minus H1 is O of S2 power 3. Yeah. So I wanted to explain this because the, the quantum algorithmic iteration will not be exactly this um, double bracket iteration with an exact bracket. But in each step, in each step of the recursion, okay, so I write it here, in each step of the recursion, we will be close to a bracket, okay? And last week, I think I was explaining why this is double bracket flow, because if the generator is a bracket, then the Heisenberg equation is a double bracket, because the Heisenberg equation is already one bracket, yeah? So basically, I would say we are still doing a double bracket iteration because everywhere locally we are close to this bracket. But of course, we are uh, at every stage, we are only approximating the exact bracket by the group commutator. Ooh. We could also try to converge onto the bracket more, more exactly. But this is already good enough to start diagonalizing yeah, as an ansatz. So this is a more modified ansatz just to make the quantum algorithm simpler. OK, so what is our quantum algorithm? Our quantum algorithm can be uh, phrased as a circuit where we are taking evolutions H0, EID0, E2 minus IH0, E2 minus ID0. We are putting here some evolution time S0, S0, S0. We are calling this V0. And that's our first, uh, first unitary. The second unitary that we want to do will be the same thing, but with the H1 Hamiltonian S0, S0 minus IH0. Uh, here we have the one, okay, I erase too fast. S1, D1, 
your new choice it can be the same but it's better to always explore more operators s1 e2 minus i s1 d1 but what what is this we can use the formula u times e2 a u dagger is equals to u a u dagger and we know that h1 is v0 h0 v0 dagger so we can write uh, I should maybe move this somewhere. Um, so we will have what? We have V0, E2, I, H0, S1, V0 dagger, E2, I, D1. Okay. And then uh, V0 again, E2 minus I, H0, S1, v0 dagger e2 minus i s1 d1 and every time we do v0 we do this okay so we have a recursive uh, formula and then i could write this as e2 i h0 s0 e2 id0 s0 uh, e2 minus i h0 s0 e2 minus i d0 s0 and that's only this part then comes the, the evolution with the step length of the first step and then i again need to do v0 so i get like one box one box one box one box and then it continues okay so this what i did now is unfolding unfolding the recursion the GC or DBI, GCI or DBI, because uh, we expressed expressed V one uh, as a circuit that queries. What does it query? It queries e to h zero with some time. T real, and it queries the diagonal operator evolutions. I write with k here. It can be d zero or d one. Okay, and with those two things, we did two recursion steps. Right. So now by induction, you just repeat. Repeat inductively and then we get the prescription of the iteration after n plus one recursion steps uh, and this will be e to i h zero to some s zero and so on there will be some e to d k on the way with some s k and so on but there will be always this e zero s k and so on and and times and and, and we keep repeating it so what happened here is that we have like some registers and we construct a unitary which is taking h0 then maybe some d0 and then dot 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 then maybe h0 again dot 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 and there's always some dk operators in between and, and then again h0 and so on so our our ingredients for this algorithm are queries to H0 and then diagonal operations, which I'm not discussing too much because this is Clifford operations should be easy. Okay. That's roughly the setup that we have. And basically unfolding is the process of changing the recursion, which where the recursion step, the recursion step is to take, uh, to obtain the uh, HK plus one Hamiltonian by defining the WK bracket, which is DKHK. And then this is obtained by rotating with SKWK, the previous Hamiltonian, ESKWK. So this is local, but uh, but it, it's kind of um, folding into itself because WK is a function of HK. And because of that, it's a recursive quantum algorithm. This is a recursive quantum algorithm, or in short, you can say this is a quantum recursion algorithm. 
And so you don't get access to, to those brackets. This access you need to build. So basically by this unfolding, I described in words how to build Oracle access to the evolution under IH0. Once I have IH, uh, IHK, so once I have IHK, I can join this with WDK e to minus IHK, e to minus IDK. I put some small evolution duration here as K. And this is, as we described, implementing as WK as K, roughly. So as soon as I have query access to the evolution under the, the iterated Hamiltonian, I can build query access to the Hamiltonian evolution uh, after the, the recursion step, okay? So this is our quantum algorithm. And basically the best way to think about this is to say, well, let me take the first Hamiltonian and rotate it. Then I need to evolve with the next Hamiltonian, but before I rotate with the, this H1 Hamiltonian, I just need to input this group commutator of the zero step. And then you do it the same way. So uh, next time when you will have, so let's say I want to do E to I H K S K. Then what I need to do is uh, V K. I think we use V K for this one. E to I H zero S S K stays and V K dagger. And for, for this V K, you can insert here the group commutator with K minus one. I B K minus one. So before I was building it up from H zero to H one and so on. Now I am kind of uh, walking backwards. H K minus one, S K minus one. You get the idea. E two I D K minus one, and S K minus one. Right. And now I need to be able to evolve with this one, but this one is V K minus one, and so on and so on. Yeah. So this is more or less, um, it's just a question whether the notation here is correct. Yeah. So VK, uh, H0, VK minus one, right? Um, so those kind of things we can do. And um, maybe let me finish by saying how to use this quantum algorithm. So um, let's say I have a quantum algorithm for diagonalization. So what does a, a classical algorithm for diagonalization do is that if you have uh, H, uh, so after infinitely many steps, you rotate the Hamiltonian and you get a new Hamiltonian, which is diagonal. And U minus one is U infinity dagger. Then the spectrum of H zero is the spectrum of H infinity. So the diagonal of that, right? That's diagonalization. Um, and now you can ask what is, um, what is data structure for this? which would be a quantum data structure on a quantum computer. So one, one way to do this, it's, um, I, I'm not a fan of this way, but this is just to tell you that there are at least two ways of thinking about this. this uh, uh, what I will write here is a valid density matrix divided by H zero and then normalize by some, let's say, approximation to the partition function. Okay, so what happens here? To have a density matrix, it needs to be positive. So when I divide H0 by its uh, operator norm, I will never uh, I will never overshoot here uh, beyond unity with the eigenvalues of H0 normalized by the norm, which means this is a non-negative operator. So this is fine. And for this, I need this norm. Okay, then I need to normalize it. So I divide by some Z. Let me remove the scribbles. Okay, I need to normalize it. And because H uh, zero and identity are Hermitian, then this is a valid density matrix. Okay, 
and trace of row, we say this is one, fine. So now I could apply our um, our evolution uh, Vn to the density matrix uh, Vn dagger and get something which will be row n and this would be approximately diagonal. Why this is not the best thing to do is the reason is that um, Hamiltonians H0 has uh, very typically you expect uh, exponentially whoop, exponentially a dense spectrum. So if you look at gaps of um, uh, E k minus E k plus one, if you look at at gaps of 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 the Hamiltonian, it might look like this, and and they will be very the the spectrum of the Hamiltonian will be very dense. So basically, if I if I look at the the mid range of of energies, or maybe I just look at the the eigenvalues. So there will be like one uh, E zero, which is the ground state. Then I might have a gap, and then I have some some numbers, but those uh, those uh, spectral lines here, they they will be very densely packed. So the gaps between the eigenvalues will be very dense. So you will get something which you analyze it okay but like would you be able to measure it out and that's very noisy and this is one reason why full exact diagonalization in quantum computing might not be very useful so instead of that you can do uh, what vqe is also doing so vqe is a parameterized ansatz for getting some unitary based on some angles so maybe i will use alpha which is nicer to write because it doesn't look like an empty set so I will find some a vector of angles such that the state psi of alpha, when I apply u of alpha to some zero state, the reference state, is approximately eigenstate of H0. And this is something I would call um, an instance of eigenstate eigenstate by eigenstate diagonalization. And you can also use a group commutator iteration or a DBI or whatever, which will give you after n steps a unitary, and then you get psi n, which is the application of that unitary or the dagger to the state. And then again, approximately eigenstate. And you can steer here which eigenstate by changing this reference state. Because um, so the difference here is this is global unitary, which works for any input. So I can get psi mu with, with the same unitary that I get from the DBI. I can apply this to some computational basis state mu, which is where mu is some um, index string on L qubits. Okay, so those are all computational basis states. And in, in applications, some variational quantum algorithms, depending on which psi you want and, and which starting point you have, you change the unitary. So this is a more local eigenstate via eigenstate diagonalization. But long story short, I define diagonalization on a quantum computer as a method which takes in simple states, gives you eigenstates, and you want to go eigenstate by eigenstate because it's it's much more efficient and you zone, zone in, you want to zoom in onto some particular eigenstate, okay? Now, if you are doing this, if you look at the expectation value, um, so let's let's say I, I have some expectation value of some observable a, a in the state rho, it's approximately trace of the observable because I have the identity. So basically all the things that are happening, so then I have plus trace a h0, yeah? 
So any any way of trying to measure out the 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 eigenvalues of this this encoded thing, it would be very difficult. I mean, you could think of some applications for maybe functions of a state or something, but uh, this is a very nosy encoding. I would call it um, uh, high temperature, high temperature because temperatures. Uh, it's it's like an approximation to a thermal state where beta is almost uh, zero. High temperature uh, encoding. So those are two ways of encoding the the information what you are diagonalizing, and then how you are diagonalizing the the thing that you are diagonalizing needs to steer it, um, and that's the what I anticipated. That I wrote it a bit too early maybe. But I wrote about this oracle. Yeah. So basically, this is an oracle to the evolution. And basically, the, the Hamiltonian H0 that we apply here in the group commutator is defining what we are diagonalizing here. Yeah? So the Hamiltonian is guiding its own diagonalization. That's a very nice effect. I would call this an oblivious. Um, oracle because you just apply those those evolutions and you don't even need to know what's H0. It's not blind because you apply it so much you could learn the Hamiltonian in principle at some point, right? But it's oblivious or you could say oblivious or it's a quantum oracle. And we can also have a classical oracle. Classical evolution oracle. And this we call Hamiltonian simulation. Uh, so that, that's a, a primitive, it's a very basic, uh, important class of algorithms, quantum algorithms, where I tell you what kind of couplings I have in the Hamiltonian. Usually this is very sparse information and you turn that into evolutions. One way of doing this is Trotter Suzuki decomposition. Okay, So this is very standard stuff, Hamiltonian simulation is a way of, of taking small mm, primitive gates and turning that into this ITH0. So Hamiltonian simulation is a way of implementing Oracle access to an oblivious quantum Oracle, but you could have access to oblivious quantum Oracle by, uh, by just uh, having some system evolving. Yeah, so basically if you're working with keyboard, there's always a backend and if you switch a backend, it's, one way of switching the, the Oracle access to the evolution. Okay, good. Then maybe some recap and we finish for today. So what I was trying to explain is that instead of the evolution under this, um, this exact bracket here, we need to do something else. And the ingredients for that will be evolutions because that's what a quantum computer does. And that's also why this algorithm is very nice. It's very nicely harmonizing with the things that a quantum computer can do. The quantum computer can evolve things. So this is a good thing. Then we take this ansatz here, which is uh, this bracketing together. I was explaining that this nesting together of uh, forward, forward, backward, backward gives us approximately the commutator. And this can be expressed as, as an approximation in, for example, operator norm. So we almost computed that, but uh, yeah, we were computing this to say what kind of approximation this is. And then there's a difference whether you're using the exact bracket or not. So if I'm using the group commutator, this is a different iteration and every at every stage you, um, you are locally close to, to taking a bracket, but it's not exactly, um, the, the bracket, so that's why this subtle distinction, this is not very important, those things are essentially the same. Okay, which means we computed that those rotations are very much related, so if we use the group commutator, um, so this kind of nesting or interlacing of evolutions, then we retain diagonalization properties, which is very good, and um, then I was explaining that this is a recursive thing, maybe this wasn't very clear, but you have to think about how you implement this and you need to unfold this uh, recursion and you need to bring it to the initial ingredients that you had in hand. So from H0 and D0, I build Oracle access to H1 and maybe some D1 I add 
like default operations. Then H1, I can do by H0. So I can get H2 by doing H1 and U1. So I get H2 by doing H0, U1, and D2. So I do them in, in some sequence. Then H3, I can also do it. And then it grows larger and larger, but this is the way of doing this. So that's the prescription. Um, then I was talking about a little bit the data structures and I mentioned this, which is important because the circuits that you get are very, very long. Okay, but in general, you're tackling a task which has an exponentially dense spectrum. So when those uh, eigenvalues are so tiny in, in their differences, so they are very closely packed, well, you will need a long circuit to resolve that. Yeah, so nothing you can do. Um, this might be actually hinting that um, that diagonalization of sparse Hamiltonians of qubits need exponentially long circuits in worst case. We don't know exactly what's the lower bound. We almost never have lower bounds on circuit depth. We don't know. Uh, there might be also much faster algorithms than this one. This one is um, exponent. The depth is exponential in the number of steps. Um, so there might be also faster ways of doing that. And um, we don't know if it's, if it's saturating a lower bound that may, may be proven at some point in the future. We don't know much about how tightly efficient this is, but we are also doing heuristics just to, to, to use as much of coherence in the circuit. The quantum volume is restricted from existing machines. So we are optimizing those steps. So as soon as we start doing that, it becomes like a problem specific assignment and hard to say make, and, uh, how to make statements. All this stuff is based on the analytics that I was showing last time, where, where we have this kind of indication that this will be diagonalizing. And to make it more efficient, we kind of lose the guidance of this uh, uh, analytics a bit. But if you have a quantum device, you can interact with the device and you can try to, on the fly, come up with those things. So you go with this recursive group commutator application, and that's an answer for how to diagonalize. So good. That was basically a descriptive way of formulating the quantum algorithm, but that's more or less what that is. And um, and it comes close to what you do on a device. You just apply evolutions, timings, then other evolutions, and then you should get a state. That should be the state. So um, yeah. All right. So let's finish here. Good.